I am Dr. Ramesh Parimi. I am a surgical oncologist. I am associated with the Face Hospitals, Madhapur, Hitek City, Hyderabad. Well, today I am going to interact with you all about uh, cervical cancer. Cervix is part of the uterus and uh, in a female and uh, uh, this is prone for cancer. Apart from uterine cancer, ovarian cancer and uh, other cancers, we also have what is called cervical cancer, which is the cancer arising from the cervix of the uterus. Cervix is part of the uterus, which projects into the vagina. So, cervical cancer is actually very prevalent, especially about uh, two decades ago. It has been the largest killer of women in India because of cancer. So, there are various reasons for that and the commonest age group is around uh, 50 years average. It is uh, Actually, uh, men op and, uh, menstruating woman is uh, one uh, category of uh, individuals who are affected. So, relatively, it is a cancer affecting the younger woman. We can say that premenopausal woman. Well, uh, that was because of the lack of awareness and because of lack of uh, active screening on a war footing by the government and the social agencies and uh, women's organizations that the cervical cancer was. Uh, very high in incidence in India, most of the parts of India, especially the rural parts. And uh, it was the uh, largest killer among all the female cancers rather in women in India in that age group. During the last two decades, lot of efforts have been put in and also better understanding of the etiology of the cancer, cervical cancer especially, the incidence has come down. Yearly we are having about 65,000 of uh, uh, new cases diagnosed all over India. This of course subject to correction. This is the last census I am talking about, the medical census. So as per the cancer registry, about 60 to 65,000 new cases are diagnosed every year, which was about uh, 85 to 1 lakh previously 20 years ago. Now of course breast cancer is taken over cervical cancer in a way. So cervical cancer is still there and uh, the awareness is very important in a month. And also there are some preventive aspects of that. Multiple sexual partners, promiscuous and uh, uh, say sexual intercourse to engage, then uh, especially men who are not circumcised or having some problems, uh, infective and all that, viral especially with the glands, penis and corpus, are also contributing to the genesis of cervical cancer. Of late, about nearly 20 years now, it has been well established that the uh, cervical cancer is also caused by a virus, human papilloma virus. There is one strain. There are different strains in that. 11, 16, 34, 35, and 36 are the main culprits which enter the cell and change the DNA and the genome and the cell multiplies in a bizarre way causing changes in the cervical cancer called dysplasia and anaplasia and cancer. So, not only the uh, facts that uh, lack of proper hygiene in the private parts, especially women in the rural folks, and also the multiple partners and other etiology as enumerated. The HPV virus is one of the greatest uh, agents, commonest agents, to account for cervical cancer in young women and also adenine cancers in certain population groups. And uh, as you might be aware, the vaccine has come in a big way prevent this cancer, especially the HPV induced, human papilloma virus induced cervical cancers. Glaxo company and others are making it and uh, these vaccines are given at a very early age to the young girls and boys also, even before the uh, girl uh, resorts to sexual intercourse or indigestion sex. It's important that uh, they are given at the proper time and proper number of doses so that the vaccine can prevent a large extent the cancers induced by the HPV virus. Boys are also given because HPV is blamed in the genesis of uh, upper aerodigestive cancers, that is head and neck cancers in men as well as women. That's why it's being given as a preventive measure. Now, uh, leaving behind other aspects which are discussed by other doctors of the team, let me concentrate on the main treatment aspects. Cervical cancer treatment depends mainly on the stage of the disease. 1, 1A, one 1B one and 1C are the stages where which are curable and 2A in the sense where the little spread is there, cervical cancer into the adjacent area called parametria. These are the two situations where a curative treatment is possible 
either by a radical radiotherapy along with the chemotherapy or a very good surgery called Vardhim cystectomy. So, in early stages of cervical cancer, to put it very brief, surgery is the mainstay of treatment because radiation has got its own side effects. The individual may not agree for radiotherapy and is going to be about 30 to 35 days procedure including intracavitary and all that, not only external radiotherapy. So, considering all these things, uh, in early stages of cancer, that is cervical cancer stage 1A, 1B, 1C and probably a percentage of 2A cases do very well and they get better cure rates to the extent of about 90 percent, 86 to 90 percent in uh, stage 1 cancer treated by radical hysterectomy by surgery. <laughs> so, the surgery consists of not only open method, but also Nowadays, for the last 10 years roughly, it has become very common to operate on cervical cancer patients in stage 1A or early stage by using minimal invasive techniques including laparoscopic radical hysterectomy, wherein the uterus, the cervix and the tubes are all removed along with or without uh, the ovaries and the lymph nodes where the disease might spread or the possibility of spread is there are also removed by this technique. So, it is a radical hysterectomy in the sense that we not only remove the uterus, cervix, the fallopian tubes and ovary on one side or both ovaries depending on the age and other factors. Along with this surgery on the uterus and the cervix, we also remove a part of the vaginal cup that is called upper part of the vagina. Then comes the next stage of uh, operation in the same sitting that is called uh, lymphadenectomy that is the lymph nodes where the likelihood of spread cancer is there or removed the pelvic lymph nodes. So, total hysterectomy along with a cup of vagina and uh, pelvic lymph node removal or dissection is standard for them operation of type 3 which is called it is a very good operation and giving very good results pure rates as good as any other modality of treatment including radical radiotherapy. And uh, the surgery is made very simple nowadays. Hardly we transfuse blood during surgery, and uh, it takes about uh, two and a half to three hours for surgery to be completed by a keyhole process. So, surgery for uh, cancer cervix is in vogue, is one of the most standardized uh, ways of treating this cancer with a curative intention. Previously, we were giving radiotherapy also following surgery, that is about 20 years back. I am afraid now there is only single modality of treatment acceptable as the standard of care nowadays for a curable stage 1 or early cancers of cervix. So, being a surgical oncologist, I myself advocate strongly that uh, Vardim's operation or radical hysterectomy is the best option for curable early stage or stage, stage 1, 2, I mean 1 A, B, C of uh, cervical cancer. This operation does not have any complications whatsoever, stay is also very minimal and it is one of the state of the art uh, uh, operation rooms and surgeons experience that matter to do this operation successfully without uh, injuring adjacent structures especially the uh, ureters which bring urine into the urinary bladder. Advanced cases of cervical cancer may not be amenable for surgery because we may fail to remove the entire uh, tumor tissue which has spread different parts of the pelvis that is lower abdomen that is called stage 2B or 3 including enlarged lymph nodes which might be uh, stuck to the pelvic wall. That is why surgery is forbidden in those cases probably a palliative type of not curative palliative type of radiotherapy with a small dose of chemotherapy is advocated. And the case stages unfortunately where the urinary bladder and rectum, the adjacent organs of uh, cervix and uterus might be involved including the vagina, in which case the treatment is just palliative and uh, in some cases only supportive including diversion of the urine, and probably diversion of the feces. Uh, this is only just a palliative type of measure. Curative surgery is possible and gives very good rates and prevention and uh, screening are the mainstay of getting these cases diagnosed early stage and giving the best option of treatment including radical surgery with very good uh, cure rates and in a very simpler way. Hope I am clear and any interaction in this regard you are all welcome. Thank you very much.